Audi TT Mark 1 Auxiliary Coolant Pump Replacement. Hi all, Andy here and welcome back to the channel where tonight I am going to find and fix the annoying leak that keeps evidencing itself on the garage floor. The cause of a leak can be quite hard to spot in the engine bay of an Audi TT due to the cramped nature of all the components. Some of the investigative work has already been carried out for me because the leak was actually spotted as part of an advisory on the MOT test recently. It's marked on my sheet as a leak from the coolant pump. All I know is for the last six months, there has been a small pink puddle appearing on the garage floor. When I do a quick dip test in it, it's sweet and therefore it must be coolant. Speaking of puddles, I would like to recommend to you popping by my friend Stephen Harper's YouTube channel if you've not already done so and you're not aware of him. Stephen covers a whole range of topics, including Audi TT fixes and also some rather good aftermarket mods. Why the link to puddles? Well, Stephen's recently fitted puddle lights to the underneath of his door so they project downwards when they open. Pretty cool if you ask me. Please do check him out, but maybe stay and watch the remainder of this video first. Right, back on topic. So the garage has actually spotted a leak coming from the coolant pump. When I think of coolant pump, I think of water pump. Now, I've recently had my cam belt and water pump changed on the car. It cost me about £450 to get that done, so if that's now leaking, I'm not overly impressed. However, I know this leak existed before it had that job done. So logic got me thinking, is there a secondary pump? Turns out there is. So where is that pump located? I'm gonna show you right now. Let's get the bonnet open and take a look. Not all TTs on the road today have their engine under trays fitted for various reasons, but mine does. Therefore, any fluid leaking does tend to sit on the tray and leaves you either unaware of the leak or disguises where the leak is. The under tray covers the entire engine area under the car. So fluid can leak out of one part of the engine, pull in the under tray, and then drip out of somewhere totally unrelated. This makes diagnosing tough. So when working out where the leak is, I would say remove the under tray. I cover this in my video on how to change the oil and filter on an Audi TT. So if you need to know how to remove it, or if you're interested in how to do an oil or filter change, click the link above. Not an awful lot of room under here, but most of the coolant fluids are rooted around the front half of the engine bay, so that's a good place to start. The under tray also prevents any light projecting underneath to illuminate the engine bay. So once removed, add a lamp below to make things easy to see. To get your best possible look at the coolant hoses and the various parts at the front of the engine bay, remove this plastic cover from the top of the slam panel. It's held in place with six plastic plugs that pop out. With the plastic cover put to one side, I can start my investigation. With most water leaks, they start off small and develop into something a lot more catastrophic as time goes by, so my advice is to investigate as early as possible if you suspect you have one. Water tends to follow the laws of physics on the whole, so if you can find a wet patch under the bonnet, chances are that it has not flowed upwards. That being said, if it's squirting out of somewhere under pressure, the leak may be below. Unlikely though. Now I knew the leak was coming from the front driver's side of the car and my immediate thoughts were radiator, but the car is not losing a lot of water, maybe even a cracked hose as we know these can perish over time. Peering down through the various hoses above where the leak appears to be leads me straight to the device that looks like a solenoid from my first car back in the 90s. However, it is in fact the auxiliary coolant pump as mentioned by the garage. It has two hoses, an inlet and an outlet, and I can see straight away it appears wet around one of the pipes. Bingo! So now I have found the pump in question, it's time to get it off the car. Obviously, there is coolant in the hoses, but you do not need to drain the system down to do this. Instead, you unbolt the two T27 Torx screws that hold the bracket to the pump. The idea being that you can pull the pump up higher than the radiator once it's unbolted due to some slack in the pipes and let gravity take care of the rest. I gave the two screws a squirt of penetrating fluid before starting as they looked rather rusty, but it was actually their location that proved the trickiest. It's not easy to get a Torx bit into these screw heads, which is something a lot of guides fail to point out when working on old cars. So be prepared for a bit of faffing about and take your time is my advice. Also, don't be mistaken thinking that these are T25 bits and it's a bit loose as you all round the screws off. These are definitely T27 Torx bits. With the pump unbolted, squeeze the two metal clips together on the electrical connection to remove it and the pump should now lift up through the hoses and you can rest it on the slam panel. This now gives me a good opportunity to inspect the pump and see if it is indeed leaking. I think it is safe to say that it is indeed leaking and it looks to be coming out from the pump body rather than the hoses. So a new pump should solve that and I can reuse the hoses. 
The two hoses attached to the pump can now be removed. I used a set of mole grips to release the closed pressure on the two metal hose clips and wiggle the hoses from the outlets. My advice would be to ensure that the hoses do not disappear back down into the engine bay or gravity will take over and your coolant will empty all over the floor. So I gaffer taped my hoses to the slam panel. Also worth pointing out that you should highlight which hose came off which outlet. So I taped the side outlet pipe to the bonnet catch and the end outlet pipe to the panel by the headlights. With both pipes removed, the pump is free and we get our first look at it. When compared to the new pump, you will see that there is no mounting bracket with it, but you can slide the old one off and slip it onto the new pump. The part number for this pump is 0392020039 and it's made by Bosch. I bought mine brand new from Amazon for £37. Now you could buy a second hand pump, but my thought process was, what says that this will not fail in a week's time and I'll be back to square one. So I bought new. Refitting is the reversal of removal. I will point out that you should let the shape of the hoses dictate where the outlet point and you can release the clips onto the hoses with the mole grips once you are happy with it. The pump bracket rotates on the pump freely, so this makes bolting it in place fairly straightforward. As I struggled to get the T27 torque screws out, I gave the threads a squirt of WD-40 again and they went in much easier. Simply refit the electrical connector and you are done. So that is my super quick and super easy guide to replacing your auxiliary coolant pump on the Audi TT. I say super easy, you need just two hand tools, some penetrating fluid and a bit of patience. What can be easier? If you, if you like what you've seen today, please do give it a thumbs up. Also think about subscribing to my channel where you'll find a whole host of Audi TT content. I did say when I got to my subscriber goal, I would be buying another Audi TT. It's going to be a hard top and it's going to be a project car. So I'm nearly at my subscriber goal for the year. So thank you very much for all of you out there that have subscribed to the channel so far. Once again, thanks a lot for watching and see you soon. Take care.